Hello, everyone. Hope you're all having a great day and welcome to this week's Product School webinar. Thanks for joining us today. Just in case you didn't know, Product School teaches product management, coding, data analytics, digital marketing, and blockchain courses online and at our 15 campuses worldwide. On top of that, every week we offer some amazing local product management events and host online webinars and Ask Me Anything sessions. Head over to productschool.com after this webinar to check them out. Today, we have an awesome guest presenting. I'd like to introduce you to Renuka. Renuka is a software engineer turned product manager. Currently, she is working on building a marketplace at Shopify for drop shipping user segments. Feel free to leave any questions for Renuka in the comments and we'll be sure to address them at the end. Without further ado, let's welcome Renuka. Thanks for joining us today. Okay, uh, can you hear me? Okay, Dan? Yep, you're all good. Okay, awesome. So I'll just share my screen. All right. Okay, can you see my screen? Yep. Okay, awesome. So hello, everyone. Uh, this is Renuka Thakur. Uh, uh, I think, uh, yeah, so before we start with the webinar topic, I want to share a few uh, things about me. Uh, currently, I'm working with Shopify as a product manager. I started my career uh, with Peak Mobile. You can see the picture of Peak Mobile at the bottom of the slide. Uh, so this was a very small uh, startup where 10 of us were uh, working together to build uh, this email only device, which sounds a bit funny now, but it was a pretty big thing back in the days. So uh, yeah, I spent around a year and a half uh, in Peak Mobile where I did a bunch of things. Uh, I was mainly working as a software engineer, but uh, while working in the startup, I also did a lot of other things, you know, uh, visited clients and did, uh, you know, product management uh, and I uh, did a bit of like, you know, every single thing that uh, in, a, in a company that you do. Uh, then I, <clears throat> around a year and a half, I moved on to join uh, Philips. I spent around five years with Philips and um, with Philips, I was working as a software engineer and then later became, you know, a senior software and then technical specialist. Uh, so while, uh, so while working as a technical specialist, I realized that I was not happy with my, uh, with my job and the things that I was doing. And uh, then I decided to <clears throat> move on to another role, but I was not really clear what I wanted to do. I did a bit of research. I met a lot of uh, people. I read about, you know, uh, other, you know, uh, careers out there. And then finally, I decided that I wanted to uh, go for product management. Uh, so uh, then I also wanted to go back to startups. So I started looking uh, jobs out there as a product manager. And I uh, then finally uh, joined Baba Job, where I worked as a PM. And uh, it was a pretty awesome team. It was a startup. And uh, even as a PM, I was doing a lot of other things. And uh, it was a really good experience. Uh, I spent around two years with Baba Job, and later uh, uh, there was another company which was going to acquire Baba Job, and that's the time I decided to move uh, to another startup. And I also thought of moving to another com uh, another country. Uh, so uh, then I spoke to uh, people uh, in in Berlin at Oberlo, and finally I joined Oberlo as a senior product manager. And later, Oberlo was acquired by Shopify. And right now, I'm working with Shopify, where I'm building uh, a marketplace for Shopify's dropshipping user segment. So let's uh, move on to the main topic. Uh, it's I am going to talk about product management uh, pitfalls. Before we deep dive into the topic, I want to share what is a pitfall. Uh, a pitfall is a hidden or not easily recognized danger or difficulty. And this is how a pitfall looks in a visual form. Uh, is something wrong? Okay. <clears throat> so uh, as a product manager, there are a lot of pitfalls that all of us experience. And uh, I am just going to share four of them uh, today. Uh, the first one is ineffective communication, not prioritizing your work, getting distracted by shiny things. And the last one is aiming for perfection in the first go. Uh, ineffective communication. Uh, this is uh, the most important challenge uh, for a product lead. And this also happens to be the part where uh, many of the new product managers fall short. 
Uh, so in my case, uh, what happened was uh, uh, when I became a new PM, I, uh, I, I was talking to different teams. I started, uh, you know, uh, building a lot more context on the product. Uh, and then I was also putting down the specifications, uh, you know, creating uh, stories, sharing the stories with the team, also following all the sprint process and, you know, creating, sto uh, creating the tasks and uh, doing all the sprint meetings like pre-planning, planning. And I think I was, I thought I was doing a really good job as a product manager. Uh, then what happened was I had to go on a leave uh, for three weeks. And when I came back from leave, I realized that uh, uh, my team was uh, not doing, you know, not really working on the features, but they were uh, mainly just doing some support activities or working on uh, tech debts. And when I came back, I also figured that they were not really happy on not working on the project because they also thought that this, the, you know, the support activities were not really important for them. And uh, this is where I realized that uh, I was not communicating effectively to my team. And uh, to be honest, uh, this problem is not just, you know, limited to one person or even, uh, you know, two people. This problem is also, uh, uh, also faced by many of the companies. Uh, so at Shopify, uh, to avoid this problem, this pitfall, what we do is uh, we operate in uh, trifectas. So uh, trifecta is uh, usually a product manager, a UX lead, and a technical lead. So three of us uh, in every single team in Shopify, we have these uh, three people, this one trifecta. And the responsibility of this trifecta is to, you know, uh, uh, figure out the product roadmap, uh, find out all the problems, uh, build project, build features, and, you know, do all sort of uh, all the, the product uh, UX and tech lead related activity as one team. So, and in this case, uh, as a trifecta, I, so from my side, I bring in, uh, as a PM, I bring in the business side of perspective. Uh, tech lead brings in the, the technical side and UX brings in the user side. And this way we, you know, communicate early. I communicate from my side, all the business cases, the problem, the goals, everything uh, early. And, uh, and also uh, I try to communicate the entire story. So usually when I have to communicate to, you know, five, six people, I try to make sure that, you know, I'm not wasting their time. I'm communicating the important things. But in this case, as a trifecta, we just communicate every single thing to each other. Even when let's say the things are not fully, you know, prepared we just try to communicate everything and uh, in and we also like you know share and build uh, you know more context because I also when we are just trying to solve the problem I also get to know the the technical uh, you know side of the picture and also the the UX uh, the user side of the picture and the same applies to two other people and in this case, also when let's say one of us is not available, the other two are, you know, easily able to take decisions. And so, yeah, uh, don't worry about over communication, worry about the quality. Um, another uh, thing that I do to avoid ineffective communication is I try to put things down on papers. I believe that writing is thinking. Uh, writing helps me to think through my ideas, structure my communication, and also keep track of the decision logs. And uh, so, yeah, so communication in written form uh, can be clearer and less error prone than communicating verbally. So uh, these are the three things that I do to communicate effectively. I communicate early. I communicate with the wider teams. I try to put down my things uh, on paper before I communicate them to the bigger teams. Uh, the next uh, pitfall is not prioritizing your work. So uh, when I joined Oberlo as a PM, I was the only product manager there and uh, we were still looking for other product managers and there were there was around uh, there were around 20 to 25 people uh, of one team where I was working with all of them and there was a separate you know CSM and marketing team. So while working with all these people, I realized that I was, you know, my whole day was just broken into small uh, meetings and, you know, small uh, pieces, small tasks, uh, which was like, you know, maybe 
needed to do but i i don't think i was enjoying it and then i always by the end of the day or even uh, in the end of the week i always realize that you know there were some important things which i did not focus on because i got distracted by uh, small things and this was a really big problem for me to solve so i tried to figure out how i can you know solve this problem by also uh, while also not uh, you know uh, disappointing my team where you know anyone want to uh, share something or get some context from me uh, so what i figured was uh, these two solutions big rocks time management and deep work so uh, big rocks time management so big rocks is a you know so you know, these are the most important things that you put in your calendar in the beginning of the week that way the smaller things uh they have to fight their uh, their way to your calendar but not the important ones that matter to you uh this is a really good technique that worked out for me and just to give you example of three big rocks in my case uh this can be like many other things and these are just the examples uh for example uh, creating product road map defining success metric for a project measuring the impact of a already uh, shipped uh, project uh, there is a book called deep work um, and uh, so cal newport the author of this book uh, he says that clarity about what matters provides clarity about what doesn't and this is what big rocks technique helps me to do uh again another example uh so i just put together like this is not my uh, real calendar but i just wanted to share how my calendar looked before i started using big rocks and after this is how it looks before and this is how my calendar looks it's much more uh, you know better and i'm able to focus on the right things that are important to me uh yeah and then uh, deep work which i feel is kind of connected to big rocks uh, there is a lot of study done on deep work and like i mentioned there is a book called deep work and it helped me uh, to become a better product manager uh so i believe of uh, focusing on one project and trying to solve one problem at a time it makes you a better product manager and then mastering in one area before moving to another area it's always better so uh the next pitfall is getting distracted by shiny things uh so there was one feature which i had to work on uh i was working on a uh, search and while working on search i did uh, you know a uh, study user study did competitor study and i figured while doing competitor study that there are a lot of companies out there who have the similar model uh you know the marketplace model and they focus a lot on recommendations and so i thought maybe this is something cool i mean though this is not something that i realized while doing user study but because competi all the competitors offered a uh, uh, recommendation so i thought you know it's a it's a fancy thing i should work on and uh, i mean if it's working for other companies it should it might work out for us as well plus you know for me it will be good to get exposure into uh, uh, rec uh building recommendation uh, then we built recommendation after we shipped it we realized that this is not something our users wanted we spent quite a bit time on it uh, but then it was a really good learning for me uh, so i feel like a lot of other product managers out there uh, and i spoke to other product managers as well and i also i believe that this is something this is a common pitfall that many of us you know uh, uh you know uh, experience and uh, so we get distracted by competitors we get distracted by buzzwords out there and also many times when you work in your previous you know in one company and move on to the other one and sometimes some of the things that you might have done in the past you feel you want to do the same things and you think the same things might work for the for the new user segment in the new company uh to avoid uh, this pitfall what i try to do is i focus on my users which i believe uh works for everyone else when you focus your current company's user your customers first then you can tackle the right problem rather getting distracted by you know shiny things uh and then focusing on the right problem and not in you know not on the innovation just for the sake of it this makes me a better product manager i would also say that you know 
I mean, it doesn't mean that we don't uh, study our competitors. We don't focus on creativity, but it's just that you need to figure out the right balance. But then, of course, put your users always first uh, before uh, building any any project or any new features. Uh, so yeah, leave room for creativity, but don't get distracted by shiny things. So the, now the last pitfall is aiming for perfection in the first go. I think this is a very common case uh, where uh, we all, you know, when we try to build, when we are building a new feature or a new project, we try to ship the feature or the project in the in a perfect form in the first go. Uh, in a way, it's a it's a right thing uh, because you obviously want to avoid uh, the bugs or uh, the the you know the problems that the users might face with the new features. But on the other hand, you might you know experience that uh, the new thing that you shipped was not useful because you never really tested on uh, production. So what helps me is uh, uh, focusing uh, on you know small features uh, without you know building the perfect solution at once. And I also believe that incremental changes uh, leads to, you know, uh, lead to smaller or manageable mistakes than, you know, making a big feature and then, you know, handling it all together once. Uh, so I think we need an approximate solution to validate our hypothesis, then, uh, you know, uh, then work towards the ideal solution uh, over the several iterations. So the lessons that I learned after I experienced this pitfall, and I think I did this mistake a bunch of time where, you know, I start uh, with MVP, but then my MVP's scope just gets bigger and bigger when we add, you know, when we do user study, when we look at all the areas and everything. Uh, but what I try to do now, I test with minimum viable product and I make sure that my MVP is actually MVP. It's not a, you know, it's not a full project. And yeah, I would say that don't waste time in uh, building the perfect product all at once, test early, test fast. So uh, just to repeat, these are the four pitfalls. Uh, and uh, this is something that worked for me to avoid the pitfall. The first one is ineffective communication. I communicate early and communicate well to avoid this pitfall. Big rocks and deep work helps me to prioritize my work well. Uh, and uh, putting my user first when I'm you know, thinking about new features or building new features helps me to not to get distracted by uh, shiny things. And testing early, testing fast, and testing with MVP, this helps me to avoid aiming for perfection in the first go. Uh, to wrap up, these are the some of the references uh, that uh, that I use to uh, prepare this presentation. Uh, like I mentioned earlier, uh, the book Deep Work. Uh, there is a medium post called Writing is Thinking. It's a huge uh, post and there are a lot of links and uh, this is really interesting writing. Uh, there is a video uh, from Mind the Product that also helped me to uh, you know, put together my slides. And uh, I have also written, converted this presentation into uh, a, a blog post already on my Medium post. So you can probably go ahead and read that. That's all. Thank you. Thank you, Renuka. That was a great presentation. Very much so enjoyed it. Awesome. So one of the first things we like to ask all of our speakers is what's one piece of advice you'd like to give an aspiring product manager? If there's one thing you could tell someone, what would it be? Um, cool. <laughs> I think it's not just like one, but yeah, I believe that, uh, 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 you know, communicating effectively and decision making, these two are the most important traits of a product manager. Uh, so for aspiring product manager, I would say first figure out if this is what you want to do, maybe uh, talk to different people and, uh, you know, uh, reach out to people on LinkedIn, go to meetups, uh, you know, read about product management. And once you figure out this is what you want to do, then I would say focus on, uh, you know, focus on uh, figuring out how you want to communicate effectively and also you know how to you know make uh, great decisions not just better decisions yeah cool i just realized the typo on my screen <laughs> sorry
Another question from our community here. I think you answered this right at the end, but we'll go over it again. Um, that's how do you avoid aiming for perfection in the first go? Okay. Uh, uh, I think so. One is like I mentioned, MVPs. Um, uh, there are so I I believe, and in my case also, many times I you know. I am not able to avoid this, uh, you know, uh, pitfall. But what I do is I try to have very small features when I'm building them. So let's say we want to, you know, what happened was we wanted to build a communication system, which is a huge, huge system. Uh, so what happened was there was a time, you know, you can just use, you know, some uh, mail to uh, email functionality just to validate if this is what your users want. So, you know, try to figure out what is the, the minimum thing that you need to ship to validate the idea. So we try to validate ideas by doing, you know, user research and uh, looking into the data. But then that's, again, not the, I mean, validating on the real user on real production is much better than, you know, uh, than your hypothesis that you are building the product on. So I would say uh, try to have as less scope as possible for MVPs. Okay, cool. Our next question is, what is your favorite part of Shopify's product culture? Okay, <laughs> that's an awesome question. Yeah. <laughs> uh, so, uh, like I mentioned in my uh, first introduction slide, um, so when I, when I was working with Baba Job after spending five years with Philips, I wanted to continue my career in startups. I wanted to just work with startups and that's why I joined Oberlo. And when Oberlo was acquired by Shopify, I was a bit worried. But then now while now after I worked with Shopify for some time, I, I, I think I, I don't have this thing that I want to go back to startups because we have this startup culture and I really like it. And Shopify focuses a lot on the work culture. And one of the thing is we have this startup culture where, you know, especially product managers, we are given a lot of autonomy, a lot of decision making power, a lot of, you know, accountability. And this helps us, you know, uh, to become really, you know, to, to do better product management. Awesome. So uh, what are the biggest challenges slash mistakes made by people who are transitioning into a product manager role? <laughs> Okay, that's another great question. <laughs> so I can talk about uh, moving from software engineering to product management. Uh, so I think, uh, so what happened when I moved uh, from software engineering to product manager, I still had, you know, still had the soft, you know, software engineer, engineer mindset. I was still thinking, you know, what I was doing as a software engineer and using that technique in the product management, rather like, you know, building a new technique which works well for product management. So I think uh, when you switch your career, you have to reset yourself. So not drag your previous experience and previous role with you. It helps to, you know, in some times when in some of the cases, but don't just get trapped in the, in the previous experience. Just make sure that you reset yourself and you think more in terms of business, you think more in terms of users than, you know, thinking more in terms of technology. And like they say that, you know, uh, you sh like your feature should be based on what your users want rather what your technology supports. So this is what I feel many people do this mistake, especially when they transition from uh, software engineering to product management. But yeah, the better way is to reset and then think in terms of product manager and use software engineering knowledge to build better products. Great answer. <laughs> Our next question is, how often do you talk to users or how often do you collect feedback through forms, surveys, user interviews, et cetera? Um, so we have a user experience team in Shopify, but then that's one team. And, uh, and, and then as a PM, I believe that I want to stay more closer uh, to my users. Uh, so initially, when I joined, uh, while doing my onboarding, I actually spent uh, around uh, uh, three weeks with the customer support team. And there I was sitting and, you know, uh, answering users' queries just to get more understanding uh, in, in users' pain areas. 
and uh, while doing that i made good friends with the customer supports they, they usually don't let anyone you know use their tools to answer but because you know they had some confidence uh, in me so i was even later when i you know as when i when i started working on project i'm still like you know looking into the already written you know the conversations or also sometimes just getting on the on the tool and start chatting with my users i try to do that personally because i feel this helps me to stay more closer to user i mean this gives me also like you know first hand information rather getting information from other people but on the other hand uh, because i have a lot of other responsibilities so this is not something that i can do even 50% of my time uh so we have really good uh customer support team we have good ux team so we try to get more and more user related context from them uh yeah so in terms of talking uh sometimes uh, you know many of my uh, our users they reach out to me on linkedin because uh uh when we ship new features i do the announcement on my own and then our users you know the at least the bigger merchants of shopify they know that i'm a, you know i'm working with oberlo and they just add me on linkedin and it helps me to even reach out to you and you know meet them or talk to them uh in shopify we also have shopify meetups uh in many of the cities and uh, i also try to attend those meetups where i go and talk to the actual users face to face Awesome. So our last question is, how do you know when you have an MVP? And an MVP is based on the market demand, and that is not easy to always find. So, how do you know when you have an MVP? Huh, that's a tough one, and it's a really good question. Uh, yeah, I think it's a uh, it's it totally depends on uh, project to project, uh, and yeah, and. so i think in every single feature or project that you build there is a way to validate it even without building that overall project you know you can always just add some sort of link or even get feedback from user in the form of type forms or you know uh, sometimes what we do we actually provide the link as a functionality and when the user clicks on it and then we ask them like hey uh, we are still in process of building this you know uh, this product we just wanted to understand if users are interested or not so i would say that you know providing these small links and you know uh, sort of collecting feedback from user this is mvp but i also understand uh, sometime when there is a business need to do something and especially when you're working on project uh it's not easy to define mvp so uh m so mvps can you know it can go for like uh, uh it can run for like two or three days of development or it can also have two or three months of development what i try to do i uh, try to avoid two or three months of development and i try to you know validate uh the feature need the project need uh you know i would say that maximum in like two or three weeks not more than that Cool. Well, thank you for answering those questions. Those were very detailed answers, very insightful. But other than that, thank you so much for joining us today. This was an awesome webinar. I really enjoyed it. I hope all of our viewers did as well. And um other than that, thanks for um thanks for joining us and thanks for everyone who joined us. Before we leave, I wanted to give you all some more info on our courses and upcoming events so you have the resources to become a product manager. our product management coding data analytics digital marketing and blockchain courses are taught by industry experts working at companies like Google and Facebook in addition to that we offer weekly online and on-site events at our 15 campuses across the US UK and Canada as well as online if you're located near a campus make sure you stop by one of our weekly events every Wednesday and Thursday also you can find us on social media at product school and be sure to keep up with the latest product management content at the product blog at productschool.com thank you all for joining enjoy the rest of your day and i hope you see you next week renuka have a great day you too dan thank you so much bye bye yeah bye